In this video, we're gonna be making a block dApp on the Solana blockchain. If you're a web developer and you wanna get started on Web3, this is the tutorial for you. I'll be showing you guys step-by-step step on how to make your first Solana smart contract using Anchor, which is just a framework of Rust. For a blog app, we need to be able to create posts. So what's special about this is we're gonna be able to create a post with a Solana smart contract and store them onto the blockchain. We'll then fetch all of those posts from the Solana blockchain so that we can display it back to our app and making our app decentralized. To do this, we're gonna be using QuickNode, which is our RPC node provider to help us get access to the blockchain. And from there, I'll show you guys how to set up your phantom wallet so that we can store our Solana and sign all of our transactions. We'll be doing all of that Solana code on something called Solana Playground, which we can use to build, compile, and deploy all of our Solana code, as well as my favorite part is testing all of our functions so you can understand how it all works together. So before we get started, make sure you use our CLI tool to get the front end code that you need to get started right away. And now without further ado, let's get to the demo. Welcome to the demo of the blog app. So it's gonna be pretty simple guys. I wanna show you how this works. First thing I wanna draw your attention to is this right here. So already off the bat, our app will auto connect to Phantom. You'll see it when I refresh really quickly. So let's do that. You see connect and then boom, we're connected, right? We're connected to this specific wallet I have, wallet number four. And at the moment, there's no user. How do I know there's no user? Because the way I have my code set up is that if I did have a user, there would be a picture and there would be a random username that gets generated. So let's generate and initialize a user. Bam, okay. You'll see that our code uses our phantom wallet to approve uh, Solana functions on the blockchain. So we can hit approve, All right? Give it a second and bam, look at that. All of a sudden we have Nervous Lion, right? That's the random name and the random avatar it generated for me. And now we have a user. Now that we have a user, that button that said initialize user is now create post, right? So what you'll learn today besides uh, creating a user, we'll be able to create posts on the blockchain. So get excited for that. So welcome to the video, right? Right? This is for you guys. All right, so if I hit post, there it is. This is how you know we're making transactions on the blockchain. I hit approve, it disappears, and bam, there you go. There's our post, welcome to the video. And if I click on it, it takes me to the full post page, right? Very bare bones front end. And we're not even gonna focus on what the front end is. We're gonna be focusing on how to make a smart contract and how to connect that contract to our front end app. So. Let's get started. All right, now that we're set up with QuickNote, let's go ahead and look at our app. I know you guys saw me use the demo, but go ahead and press Control J and make sure you CD into your app so you're in the same root folder as I am, right? So if I do yarn dev here, right, we're on localhost 3000. So what I'm gonna do is open up my browser again and let's go ahead and type in localhost 3000 and let's take a look. And bam, there we go, here's our app, right? What's the difference though? You notice, couple things, there is no posts, right? But would you say this is a working app? I'd say not yet, right? The things that you see here, like my random robot and the create post, right? It doesn't work, right? It's all static. I can click this, nothing, right? I can, uh, this is not even a user registered on the Solana blockchain, all right? So what does this app do, all right? Let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do next is show you the difference. So if I open up my app, Let's go to the source and let's head over to our pages, All right? The page that I care about is the dashboard, All right? So in this dashboard, right? Look at this comment here and it's our static data, right? This random robot here, let's turn it to Lance. All right, so if I save this, let's open up my app. See how the name has changed? It's using static data. We wanna change this. The goal of this app is we're gonna turn all of our static data using our Solana code, right? So I'll simplify it for you, All right? This is where you can change the avatar. So that means we need a user object, right? There's another thing here that says connected true, right? So if I say connected false, let's see what happens. Look at that. My name is now gone, right? And I have this connect button right here. That doesn't actually work either. Okay. And then you also see post is equal to this and just some static functions that don't do anything, right? But the cool thing that you can visualize is if I change the show model to true, right, look what happens, right? This is the modal that we make 
to create a post. All right, so that's another thing that we keep in mind. Think of this as our little controllers that we want to give functionality to, right? So those are the main things that we will work on, the functionality and fetching and creating, right? Another thing that we need to know is how exactly does this app work? So let's go ahead and review that, okay? So what I'm going to do is open up a website, and I'm going to use this website to just illustrate how our app works. And remember I said you need the prerequisite is to understand uh, React. Well, or one th the one prerequisite I said is to understand fundamentals of JavaScript and HTML, right? So let's talk about HTML and React, right? So basically there's a tree when it comes to components, right? So uh, the best way I can illustrate this is let's format it. So let's take a look. What would you say is the parent component, right? The most top level component that holds the whole entire app. Well, if I were to tell you, it would be this app.jsx right here. See this? If I were to remove this router, right, the app would break. All right, you want some proof? If I do this, boom, all right, just blank screen. All right, if I bring it back, we're good. Okay, and I can't even exit out this model because I need to change this to false. Boom, okay, cool. All right, you get the idea. So this is our main component here. And there's something called a blog provider, which I'll get to. And then there's something called a router. All right, let's illustrate what this app looks like by making a little rectangle here. Let's call that app. All right, so this is our most top level component. And the app has children, right? You do see this router here, but we'll talk about that in a second, right? So if you go, let's figure out what router is. So it's in source, router, boom, okay? So the child of app is inside a router, right? And in this router, right, you see route path. We can go to two different pages. This forward slash for path means just the regular URL. And this read post by ID, right? It's a dynamic URL. So this leads us to another page, which is essentially uh, in the demo, when you saw me click the post, it's gonna lead you to a page with that post, right? So there's two ways routes, right, two routes, our app can go. So to illustrate this, right, we can either load the dashboard, right, or we can load the full post, right? So let's uh, write that down. So let's say dashboard, and we'll say full post. You with me so far? Cool. So in my app, there's two routes, dashboard, full post, right? If we go to our folders here underneath sort, if we open up the pages folder, guess what we see? We see dashboard.jsx and we see full posts, right? So what did I just change? Where, was, where does the static data live, guys? Does it live in uh, full post or does it live in dashboard? What do you think? I think it lives in dashboard, right? Because this is dashboard.jsx and this is where the static data is, All right? So if you understand that, you're in a pretty good standing. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Cool. So now what I want to talk about is what's in the dashboard, right? So let's go on the dashboard. Let's scroll down. Let's look for any other components, right? We see uh, JSX here. That's normal, right? That's how we can see home and blog, right? The image that holds my avatar, right? If I keep scrolling, I keep scrolling. Here, line 133, you're going to see something called posts.map. All right, what's post then? You might not know, but post is an empty array. But what should it contain? It should contain all of my blog posts, right? Right now it's empty, which is why you see nothing, right? But dot map is a built-in array function, right? If you didn't know, map will iterate through an array and basically make a new uh, array, right? If you had like a can of blueberries, right? You take the blueberries and put it in a new can of blueberries, right? Depending on what you want. Kind of like filter, but different, similar. All right, so what does this map make, right? So for every single item, and you can read this as post, for every single post in posts, make all of this HTML. So mm -hmm. if we have zero posts, how many uh, of this JSX elements will it make? Zero. If we had one or two posts, how many of these it would make, right? It would make two. Right. This isn't really a component, but we'll label it as one. We can call it article. All right. So and then the dashboard. Right. Let's do a. 
within the dashboard, right? It's gonna make articles, right? And we can even illustrate it like this: article, article, article. Okay. Think of these as posts. They're really just posts. Cool. Is there any other components that we need to care about? Right. There's nothing called post form. All right. When is this post form shown? Well, well it's, it's going to be shown when show modal is true. Ah, okay. So remember when we were changing the static show modal to true or false, right? This is our flag that's going to tell us, hey, this is when you should see the modal. This is when you shouldn't see the modal. So that's how that's working there. And if you look, we also have components. All right. These are buttons the, that we made. Right? If you go to components, you can see that we have a component here called button and I'm just reusing this. That's the cool part about React and components mm -hmm. is that you have reusable uh, JSX that you can use for whatever you need. So notice how many times I'm using this button. It's like three times, I believe. All right, so this button's right here, one, and there's another button right here. And we're gonna create a button and use it together soon. Cool. Other than that, we can take a look at full post, right? If I look at full post here, right? Pretty standard, right? There's no, um, it's another article tag, but there's no components with it. So this is it for full post. I don't want you guys to worry about this just yet, right? We're gonna worry about it later. And what I do care about is dashboard, okay? So what do we wanna do then? What's the point of this? Well, let's make some pseudocode. All right, to make some pseudocode, I'm just gonna go down below here and let's make kind of a to-do list, right? What do we wanna do first? Well, if you look at our app, can I connect anything? No. What should we connect to? We want to connect to our phantom wallet. Okay. So first step, let's type it, set up phantom connection. Yeah. There's a couple different steps for that. We want to set up our phantom connection to uh, make sure that we can use our test Solana to write to the Solana blockchain, right? I want you guys to start thinking of Solana blockchain for now as like on any other database, right? What do we want to store on the Solana chain? I want to store blog posts, right? Anytime you store something on Solana, you need to pay Solana to do that, right? You're going to say like, hey, uh, think of it as like space, right? If you're going to a storage facility, you can't just throw your couch in there. You need to pay the people to store it there, right? So we want to set, um, make payments using our phantom wallet. Okay, so I'll show you guys how to do that. Set up phantom connection. The second thing is set up our blog context. Yeah, our blog context, right? You guys know what you mean by that, right? Set up our blog context, right? Uh, another thing that we should do, actually, let's make that step three. What we should do for step two is write Solana functions, right? We need to be able to create posts, right? And sign up users, right? So maybe we can indent this, oops. We can indent number two and say, we need to be able to initialize a new user, right? And then we also want to create posts. There you go, right? So if you were coming from this to-do app, this is gonna be even simpler than the to-do app with Solana, all right? So we, all we wanna do, initialize a new user, create posts, and then set up our blog context, right? Call Solana functions from the front end, right? Because we can make the Solana functions on the Solana network, on the blockchain, but we need to call them from our front end, right? Which I'll show you how to do that as well. So this is really exciting, right? And other than that, if you do all this, right? The app's pretty much done. So without further ado, let's talk about the phantom connection. All right, there's a couple of things that you need to do to set up this phantom connection, right? The one of the first things that I want you guys to do is uh, make a new tab and let's get phantom if you don't already. If you do, go ahead and skip ahead to where I start connecting the buttons, All right? So if you don't have phantom or don't know what it is, phantom wallet is essentially your virtual wallet that's going to hold Solana for you. Right, it's going to hold any other tokens. It'll even hold any NFTs that you own on the Solana chain now, which is awesome. So what we could do is type in phantom wallet extension, right? And this is going to work if you're using Google Chrome. So since I am using Google Chrome, click on this. You'll see the extension and go ahead and click install in section, uh, extension. I already have it, so you should be good to go. All right, once you do, 
you should see it over here. All right, if you don't, you can click this uh, extensions puzzle piece and make sure you pin it so that you can click it easily. It's gonna tell you your recovery phrase. Make sure you save that somewhere and don't share your recovery phrase with anybody else or your private keys. All right, so when you enter your password, all right, I'm just gonna do this. And as you can see, you can make multiple different wallets. I have four, I actually have six now, right? All for testing purposes. And what you need to do first is go to settings here, right? You can change the name of your wallet right here. But what I care about is this change network. So change the network and make sure you're on the same network that we're developing on. So which one are we developing on guys? I know you can see it. So it's DevNet, you got it. Good job, Jason, All right? So you can click DevNet. If you're working on the main net, click main net, vice versa. Okay, cool. So we're on DevNet, we're on the same page, but if you notice something here, oops, not wallet three, we want wallet four. You might not have any Solana, right? I have 26 soul, right? I'm not rich or anything, but I can show you guys how to get test Solana, right? We're on the DevNet, this doesn't mean anything. All right, to get free Solana on the test net, all right, you can type in soulfaucet.com and all you have to do is open up your wallet again, see this cvr6 that is my public key or in other words that is the address of where my wallet lives on the solana blockchain so let's hit copy let's click on it and go click on this input field paste and there you go there's my full address right if you want to send me money you or send somebody money just send soul to that address right same logic here right we can airdrop up to two soul right i usually do two and make sure you click DevNet. So let's remember how much I have right now. I have 26. Cool. I click on this. Boom. Successful airdrop. I got to Seoul to this address, right? I can click on my Phantom. 28, right? Get as much as you need. Uh, you won't need a lot. You may need like up to six Seoul. So maybe do this three times, right? Because when we deploy the smart contract, that's going to cost some Solana as well. Remember, anytime you put something on the Solana chain, it's going to cost some Seoul. It's a good practice for that. So Get as much Solana you need. Other than that, you should be good to go and set up with Phantom. Okay, so for now, I'll X these out. All right, so let's set up the Phantom connection. The first thing to understand is we need to make sure that my Phantom connection, Phantom connection, or Phantom wallet connection, right? We wanna make sure that this connection is available in my entire app, right? So if I want to make this available, should I set this up in full post? Is that going to be working on my entire app? No. Should I set it up in dashboard? No. What if I set it up an app? Yes. All right. Because if you set it up an app, technically Phantom Wallet will be available throughout the whole thing. The circle is, is simplifies the where the Solana wallet connection is from. Okay, cool. So where do we want to set it up? Let's set it up in the app. Okay. So I'll put this here to visualize it for you guys. And let's go ahead and move to this and let's go ahead and go to our app.jsx what we can do is make this smaller and let's make it a little bit more visible for you guys how's that cool and you're going to see there's already an import ready for you guys to use uh there's the context our block provider which i'll explain later when we get to it our router which controls which page we're at and this is our jsx right here so how do we get the connection all right let's go ahead and do that so like I mentioned before, we need to wrap our entire app with the connection, right? So we want to wrap this router with that connection. We need to provide our router with the connection. So if you understand what I'm about to do, the block provider will start to make a little bit more sense, right? So like I said, we want to provide our router with the connection. So we're going to need to import a couple things. So let's go ahead and write import. Uh, let's write this curly brackets here to destructure it. And let's write connection provider, right? You're gonna see this auto import connection provider from Solana Wallet Adapter React. Cool. And there's another thing that we're gonna need from this. It's gonna be something called a wallet provider, right? The first one is providing the connection. You can look at the second one as providing which wallet we're using because uh, there's multiple wallets. It's not just Phantom Wallet. I just prefer to use that one. So let's go ahead and do wallet provider, right? And like I said, we are using Phantom. So we can actually import the Phantom wallet adapter from Solana wallet adapter. Wallets. All right. I should say wallets. Yep. Cool. So we got these three imports. Uh, that should be it, I believe. Cool. So 
The next thing I want to do is set these imports up. So let's go ahead and set up our imports, right? So to use the connection provider, what we can do is wrap this entire thing with that provider. So let's bring it out. I'll show you what I mean. Connection provider, boom, right? Would you say this is wrapped inside this? Not quite. So let's go ahead and bring that up here. Boom. So now we just wrapped an entire connection with our app, right? You can look at it with that circle again. So if I do whoop, this is our connection. It's provided, right? Or at least the skeleton of it is. Yeah? Cool. We want to do the same thing for the wallet provider. So let's go ahead and type in wallet provider. All right, bring that all in here. And let's just bring it out here. Let's give it a nice indent. Cool. So what did we just do? All right? If this is our connection provider, we also provided a wallet around our whole app. So think of it like two circles, right? And again, this not, might be super accurate, but I think it's a good visual to kind of understand uh, what's going on. Okay, cool. Uh, we're not done yet though, mostly because we set up the skeleton, but we didn't provide a connection and we didn't say which wallet we're using. So to do that, uh, we're gonna need to pass in a prop called endpoint and tell him tell him what endpoint we're using. So remember that quick node uh, endpoint that we use, this is where you're gonna plug that in. Cool, so endpoint equals, let's just put this empty object here and let's define what our endpoint is. So let's say const endpoint. I'm just gonna hold in the variable. You don't have to do this, but it's just gonna make this a lot nicer because if you remember our HTTP provider, if you copied it, it's gonna be pretty long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. There we go. And we can just write endpoint. Awesome. Okay, so we have the endpoint. Another thing that we need to do is get our wallet set up. So what wallets are we using? We're using Phantom. So we're gonna to need to use this import in just a second. So let's do const wallet is equal to use memo. All right, it's a React hook. And inside this React hook, it's gonna take in an anonymous function. I'm gonna put this array here and inside this array, let's write new, new phantom wallet adapter, right? And then we can put parentheses here, comma, comma after this uh, end of this bracket and then another empty array right here. Cool. So then now that we provided the endpoint, let's provide the wallets for our provider. Let's say wallets is equal to wallets and another cool thing is we can write auto connect here so that it'll automatically connect and there you go we set up our connection but at the moment we're not connecting right because there's nothing set up um, to use that connection or make use of it so let's go ahead and do that so let's refer to our little diagram here and if i want to use the connection that i just made which component should i be looking at should I look at full post, app, or dashboard? I'm gonna give you guys three seconds. Three, two, one. All right, if you said dashboard, ding, 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 you got it. All right, so let's go ahead and use the dashboard. All right, I don't know why I used my Epic pen, but let's go ahead, go to dashboard.jsx, right? And let's get started and see what we have here. So again, I gave you guys a little bit of help here. I used all the imports already, right? But the imports that we care about is this use wallet, right? And we also care about uh, phantom wallet name, right? This might be in use already. Okay, cool. So let's scroll down. We can go back to this app. And remember how I said connected is false, right? We don't have to use this, right? Come this out, you're gonna see there's errors, right? Because connected doesn't exist. What you need to do is grab connected from use wallet, right? We imported that from here. Use wallet is a hook from Solana wallet adapter, right? And you can get something called connected here, right? Connected is basically gonna read our connection and say, hey, there's a wallet connected. If there is, right, it will be true. And if it's not, it's gonna be false. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. Okay, cool. And notice something here. It doesn't say, uh, what's it called? Connect, there's no connect button. All right, it's the same as if I were to undo this and bring this back. 
It's the same as me switching this flag or this variable from true, I mean from false to true, right? Except I didn't have to manually change it, right? This is called static, right? And me taking this out is making it what we call dynamic, right? So if I wasn't connected for whatever reason, let's refresh this. Or let's actually just uh, see if there's a way to disconnect here. Okay, now I'm a different person. I guess there's no real way to disconnect. Oh, I know. Maybe if I do a uh, different network. Let's try this. I actually don't know what will happen here. Okay, so it still says I'm connected even though I'm in a different network. That's fine. But basically, if I my wallet wasn't connected, which you might see when I mess around with this, right? it's going to say connect. But remember that um, property right here, auto connect, it will automatically connect our wallet if it's already there. So let's try not having this. There we go. Cool. So I didn't. I removed auto connect. So now it's a better visual. Connected is what, guys? Is it true or false? False. If I click this, right? It should work, right? We should auto connect. Boom. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So connected is working now. And let's see what else. On connect, select connecting true. Boom. Okay. Nice. Awesome. So we're auto connecting. We already have our phantom connection up and running. Let's see what else do we need here. Hmm, I actually think that's good. All right, so we'll come back to this, right? But with that said, we have our phantom wallet connection up and running, which is awesome. All right, so what's next? Let's take a look at what we wrote, All right? What we wanna do next is write Solana functions, right? That was a very simple way to say, um, edit, write Solana smart contract, right? So if you didn't know, if you don't know what smart contract is, basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a contract, right? Where you have a list of things that you need to do. And depending on what you want it to happen, it happens instantly. That's what makes it smart, right? So how do we write a Solana smart contract? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let me show you. So I'm gonna make this full screen. We're not gonna go into VS code for a while. We're gonna come back to it in later. All right, so what we wanna do is make a new tab here. And let me show you a website. It's gonna be called beta.sol.pg.io. Right. If you guys are coming from Solidity at all, this is essentially the remix of Solana. It's an online IDE where that helps you write Solana smart contracts, right? I already have a new project set up, but let's say you wanna make your very own project. What you could do is hit create, and there's three frameworks. We could use native Rust, uh, Anchor Rust, which is just a framework of Rust. And then there's new support for something called Seahorse, which is right, you can write Solana with, Py with Python, right? Let me try it again. And there's a new uh, framework here called Seahorse, which is very exciting. It's basically writing Solana code with Python, which is cool, All right? But today we're gonna be using Anchor. So let's go ahead and name our project. Let's say uh, Solana blog. And let's click Anchor Rust, click Create, and boom, there we go, right? And you should see basically the same thing I had before, right? Uh, let's just go over what is here, right? So there is essentially an import here. This is the ID of our smart contract or what we call in Solana programs, right? So when I say program, it also means smart contract and I'll use them interchangeably. Cool. So if you see this hashtag program, this is what we call a macro in Rust and underneath it is uh, the actual program, right? So if this is the, a macro for program, underneath it is our smart contract. This is everything about our smart contract. This is a function. There's structs here. Don't worry about those just yet, but uh, we'll get to it. So what I'll do for you guys is I'm going to erase everything except declare ID because uh, we're going to need that for a second. All right, I'm going to build it from scratch just for you. This is Solana Playground. The reason why I love it is because not only you can build, you can also test all of your Solana code as well as deploy, right? Because after you write this smart contract, we need to deploy it on the blockchain, right? So let's illustrate that, right? So basically what's going to happen is we're going to write a rectangle here. That's a smart contract. Let's make a giant one. This is called the blockchain. Right. So if this is the smart contract, right, we're going to write something here, right? Once we finish writing it, we can deploy it so that it lives on the blockchain, right? Let's make a circle here. This is our, our app. What we want to do 
is use our endpoint, right? We use our endpoint to connect to the blockchain, call our smart contract. And what, let's say we want to create a post. We'll call the create post from this smart contract. We'll create the post, right? The post will get created right here. This is the post on the blockchain. And then we're going to fetch the post, right? Fetch post. Right? This is a visual of what's happening or what's going to happen. All right, so what's the first step we need to make? All right, so if we just rewind a bit, what we need to do first is make the smart contract. So this is the step that we're on visually. You with me? Cool. So let's get started. Okay, cool. So as you can see, our main file that's going to have all the main information is lib.rs. This is our entry point uh, for Solana to read our code. So the clear ID um, is, our, is the program address. All right, so let's get started. To get started, remember when I use the word import, where we're importing usually a library, uh, a hooked from React, right? With Anchor, the closest equivalent we have is something called use. We want to use Anchor Lang, right? Uh, Anchor Lang is a library within Anchor, which again, framework for Rust. So when I do colon colon, Basically, I'm going inside that folder or inside that library. And there's going to be a couple different folders or different other libraries, right? So within anchor lang, I want to get something called prelude. Simple enough, right? And you don't have to fully understand what prelude is, but just know that we're going to import it into our lib.rs. Cool. So if I do colon colon again, I'm going inside what? I'm looking inside prelude and then I'm going to write star, right? Get me everything from prelude which is coming from anchor lang we're good All right let's say we had but now the question is let's say we had other files here right if we had other files here let's make other files let's say a new file let's say uh constant dot rs right rs stands for rust and let's say uh states rs cool how do we bring these files whatever's in them inside our app All right so the first step is you want to say pub mod constant and then you want to say pub mod states, right? And then to uh, import them as modules, we're going to say use crate, right? Think of crates in Rust, like um, the closest thing I think of for JavaScript would be like NPM, They're like packages, right? So I want to get, let's do this, get constant, right? Which is going to be this file. And basically if I do this, what am I saying now? Get me everything within constant. Right now there's nothing, but we'll put something, don't worry. And let's do a comma here and get me states. And how do I get everything within states? We'll do this. And another thing you'll notice is if I put a semicolon here, right? In JavaScript, we can get away with this, right? In Rust, we can't, right? Every time you end the line, right? That's the last piece of that line of code. You need to put a semicolon. Otherwise, it'll think that it'll, Rust will read it like this, which is gonna give us an error, right? So make sure you mark the end of your code or line with a semicolon. If you don't do this, it'll yell at you. After that, usually the program, the declare ID goes here. Awesome. And remember, how do we define a program? Right? We can use a macro. We can say hashtag square brackets program, just like so. Cool. So what we could do here is a pub mod, and this is where you can name your smart contract or your program. What do I want to name this? Uh, I could just say blog soul, All right? And then if I put curly brackets here, this whole scope is the smart contract or what we call the instructions, right? What are the instructions of this contract, right? Cool. So quick recap. Basically, we are importing any libraries or files that we need to the global scope over here. Everything I'm highlighting, it's in that scope. We can just use this as is, but we can also just bring these variables into this scope, right? We can do that by saying use super star this line right here to my understanding right basically if this bring if these lines of code brings it to this scope you super will bring all of these into this scope right Every, so that i can just use it easily in the program otherwise i still have to do like create did this and then get what i need from it i can just call what i need without uh saying create or states okay cool so let's make our first function, All right? To create a function on uh, Solana, 
All I have to do is write pub fn. Boom. Fn is like in JavaScript if you write a function here. So fn is function. Next is just the name, right? You guys know this. And let's say, let's call it init user, right? When I say init, it means initialize the user, right? So if we go back to our app, we want to initialize a user for this app. And the user should be related to our wallet, right? So essentially, uh, we can sign up using our wallet address as our user, right? That's the idea here. You don't have to, there's many different ways to do it, but it's the way we'll do it. Cool. And just like any other function, we put parentheses. Uh, the difference is you need to put a dash greater than sign to make an arrow. And then you're going to say result and do something like this, right? Basically, you're saying, hey, this function will get you a result. And what? And then we put these curly brackets. And that is what the function does. This is a skeleton of a function in Rust. So you would basically write, oops, write logic here. And what do we write in logic of? It's initializing a user, right? So let's build this like in JavaScript and I'll turn it to Rust. So basically, uh, we're gonna put in a couple parameters. Okay, so again, for JavaScript, what should making a user take in, right? I can see a name and I can see a profile picture. So we can write that name and uh, we'll call it avatar. Boom, right? So this is how you'd write it in JavaScript, but now I'll show you in Rust, it's a little bit different, right? Uh, if you guys are familiar with TypeScript, this might make a little bit more sense. So with Rust, you have to specify the type of the variable. With JavaScript, it doesn't care what it is, it'll figure it out later, right? In Rust, it needs to know. So name, you wanna put a colon here to define the type, and then you can say space string. So I'm basically saying uh, this function in the user is gonna take in a parameter called name, and it's gonna be a string. If it's not a string, you sh it's just it's a problem, right? So then Rust will say like, hey, this isn't a string. That's the reason for typecasting. Okay, so for avatar, right, what should this be? If you're not sure, we could take a look at our VS Code and we can go to dashboard. Where is it? a URL, an image or an avatar is essentially, with these quotes, it's a string. So we can actually say string here too. Cool. So you might think we're done, but there's one more thing that Rust needs. It needs to take in uh, context, something called, or we'll say is CTX, okay? Well, what is the context, right? Uh, essentially is, I look at context, my understanding is what information should init user have when it comes to um, the struct in Rust, right? So you might not, that might not mean anything to you, but that's okay. All right, so what is the type of struct? It's not a string, right? It's gonna be type context, okay? And you're gonna put these two things here. And inside this, right, if you look at the docs, it'll usually be T or something like that. Inside this, you wanna describe the struct or what that context is. Well, uh, usually the convention here is the context will be similar to the name of the function. So I'm just gonna be init user, right? So take in whatever context, whatever init user means, take in the name and take in the avatar, right? There's the reason why we need context here is because there's some validation. There you go. So we need in the user, it's going to take in context name avatar. Uh, this, this doesn't exist yet, right? If we were to run this and say init user is undefined or I don't know what this is, right? So what you need to do is we're going to pause, like put a pin on this, pause it, and let's create this init user context, right? So it's going to be pretty simple. You want to go outside the scope of your program. So I'm going to go to line 19 for me and let's define this struct. So uh, in Solana, the most simplest way to do this, what we're gonna do is uh, if we can create something called accounts, right, or a program derived account. Basically, we're gonna use our program to create accounts that hold information, right? So this might hold a user, right? So basically our smart contract created this and we can call this an account, right? This account will have its own public key, right? It will have its own address on the blockchain and information that I put in, right? So in order to set that up, uh, we gotta have to write these structs. So I'm gonna say hashtag and we'll say derive, 
right? This is why I'm going to say the word accounts, built-in macros that's going to make our life easier. Okay. Next, we're going to say instruction here because this is an instruction, right? Then we can say the pub struct, and then we need to make sure it's the exact name of this, right? Otherwise, uh, it won't know what you're talking about. So this is init user, right? Same spelling, right? It's good. And then we need this again, and we need to write info, right? Again, I, for me, when I was getting to Solana, it was so hard to understand info. Talked to a lot of different developers about this, but the simplest way to my knowledge about how I can explain this is that info is what we call a lifetime variable, right? Uh, the way I'll explain it is in JavaScript, if I say let array is equal to this, right? How long will this array exist in memory? In JavaScript, it's essentially going to exist forever until you don't use it. And then something called uh, the garbage collector in JavaScript will remove it. Right? But otherwise, it's just going to stay there until you do something. With it. Uh, a lifetime variable tells us, tells Rust how long this will live for in the code. And the reason why info is confusing is because info, you can look at it as it'll live. This will live <laughs> as long as it needs to. Right? Yeah, I know. All right, cool. So all you need to know is that usually when we're going to make a struct, we're going to add info to it, all right? We need to tell them how long this is going to live for. You don't need to uh, fully understand how, how long it needs to live for. You just need to put info there. Okay, cool. What is important though is within this uh, two curly brackets is the scope of the context. And within that, we're going to write another macro here. It's going to be a count, all right? The cool thing about uh, anchor is that we don't need to set up the account itself, we can use this macro to initialize it or set it up. So how do we initialize an account? Um, it's really difficult, guys. You just got to write in it. Boom. It's initialized, right? Cool. Next thing I want to have here is something called seeds, right? Uh, seeds is what's going to help us find the program address for our um, account, right? So let's say we want to make a user account, right? It's going to be at like some sort of address, like something like this, right? Uh, the address already exists. We just need to get a place. We need a place to put this user right, at this address, right? Uh, so in order to verify or trace it back, we're going to use a seed to generate that address, right? Uh, the closest thing I can relate to, it's not exactly the same thing, is let's go to something called dice bear, right? Dice bear is you put a custom seed right? And then you get a random avatar. So if I say cat, right, this is the avatar it generates. So the equivalent here is I put in a seed, right? We get, uh, instead of a picture or an avatar, we get a public key or an address, right? It's not a new address. It exists. It's just a place we can put it, All right? So let's say my seed is a string called user and let's get, and usually we do our authority or our public key. So let's copy this and paste it, right? It's these two things together will make our public address. So this is our public address or our, our PDA, right? So yeah, that's what we want to do for seeds, right? And for the seeds itself, right? I'm just going to write user seed here. This is a variable, right? There's, if I were to run this, it's going to say this is undefined. Cool. Don't worry about it yet. Then I'm going to put a comma here, right? And say another seed that this is going to take is authority. Right, who authority is basically um, who is in charge of this account, and typically it will be the the person what wallet that you're connected. With, right, so this is my CV. Right, this is why I put this there, CV. Right, and to get that key and make it dynamic, you're gonna say authority dot key dot as ref, and you don't need to know exactly what as ref does. Just know that it gets it basically formats the key to something that the seeds can read. All right, this can read. Okay, cool. So we set that up. Let's set up this variable, All right? Where am I getting this variable from? You could define it at the top here. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to show you guys an alternative and that's going to go into constants, All right? We can go into our constants right here. And what we want to write is say, use anchor lang prelude star, All right? And to make a constant, we can say constant, right? Like this and say pub const, right? And it says constant user seed, right? That's where I get the name. And what's the type of this? It's going to be and u8. 
uh, UA just means unsigned integer, right? And it's going to be equal to a binary string called user, right? So this is a fancy way to put a string as a seed, right? And you'll see that when I test it, right? Don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you. Once we test this, it will all make sense. Okay. Then we're going to do constant right here. Let's put another one since we're here. We'll say pub const. We're going to need a post seed later on. So to save time, I'm going to make it same thing. And you ate, right? Because we need this in bytes and bytes of a post. Boom. So we have our constants all done, all set up. And now, because of this, we bring it to global scope. Because of you super, I can just write uh, user seed. Well, actually, no, it's because of this. It's still global. I can still write user seed right here. Instead of doing a constant, or something like that, right? Cool. So we have that seeds done. Another thing that we're going to need is something called bump, right? All right. So what bump is basically, let's say I want to put this user at this address, but if there, well, let's say there's something in there. Let's say there's a, a tweet in there, right? I can't put this there if there's a tweet. So bump is going to go to the next available one, right? Which is at a different address, which could be ASDAS and then different set of numbers, right? We could put the user data at that address, right? The, the equivalent on dice bear would be like, this is my seeds. Oh, wait, there's already a picture there. Let's put a one in there. This is our program address. Completely different, right? Cool. So I hope that makes sense. That's what bump is for. And again, if whenever we store something or puts, even though it's our program creating this account, we still need to pay. So we can say the payer is equal to the authority. And the authority, you can just look at it as us or who owns it. The next thing we need to do is space, right? How much space is whatever this is going to take? Okay. Well, to determine that, right, we need to figure out what the hell we're getting space for. So before I define how much space it is, what I want to do is say what this macro is for. And again, we do that underneath the macro. So we say pub user account, right? User account, right? So how much space does a user take? I don't know either yet, right? We gotta find out. Okay, so I'm lying, I do know, but let's find out together. So again, what type is user account? Well, user account is gonna be a type of an account, right? This should be an account. Uh, inside of it, we're gonna put info, of course, and put a comma here and put user account, right? So what kind of account, uh, what kind of type is user account? It's gonna be an account. What kind of account is user account? It's gonna be something called user account. And does this exist yet? I tell you no. So if I run this, it's going to say, Hey, uh, I get it. Yeah, this should be an account. That's cool. But what the hell is a user account? All right? That's what it's going to say. So I'm gonna put a comma here. And let's make another macro to set up the rest of it. I'll say account mute. And it'll say pub authority signer info. Right? Another thing is pub system program is going to be program right this signer uh attribute here is coming from somewhere else this program is coming from anchor link right so we could just say info system boom All right so within this context we figure we give him we give this function knowledge about what the hell a user account is an authority what are the authority is which is us who's ever signing the transactions and the system program, which is going to be uh, essentially this. Okay, cool. So that's all said and done, but uh, we still need one more thing. We need a user. Account. So let's go ahead and make that. So remember the states file, this is what we're going to do. So similar to how we did the constants, right? We can say use uh, anchor lang prelude star semicolon. Did I put a semicolon here? Sometimes I forget. Cool. So we end up import. Now, how do we define an account, right? So we made a constant here. How do we get an account? Well, luckily there's also a macro for that. So we can say account, right? And we're going to knock another one. We say derive default and we're good to go. So let's define what the name of this account in. We want to make sure that's the same name as this. Otherwise uh, it will still be undefined. So we say pub struct user account, right? So you might not know what the hell is going on, right? But if you're coming from JavaScript, let's say I want to make a user 
All right. How would I make this user object? All right. If you think back, it's going to be name, right? And it's going to be uh, avatar, All right? This is the Rust equivalent or the anchor equivalent, All right? So how do we make a user object? Well, we can say that a user account will always have a name. And what's the type of that? String. Yeah. Cool. What else should a user account have? All right, the cheat sheet is right here, guys. It's a pub avatar string. All right. Cool. And now, do you get it? This is the user account. And you could leave it as is, but I'm going to add more properties to a user account uh, to make the rest of our functionality a lot simpler. This is the way you can think about your code. All right. The way I'm getting better and better at Solana, I'm no expert yet, is by constantly making these projects, right? It's not the projects that yourself that gets a job. It is you practicing them and understand the concepts. So once you figure out the pattern, right, you can use it for what? So let's say I want to make a tweet account, a Twitter account. All right, how would you make that? All right, same structure. So for the authority, I'll say, uh, I'm going to have another property called authority here, and this is going to accept the type pub key, right? Because when I make a user, I want to make sure that the public key of my wallet is associated with it, All right? That wallet has authority of this user, and it should be different and dynamic. Another one it's going to be is a last post ID, right? Because when I map through the posts, I want to give it an ID. And I don't want any duplicate IDs out here. So we can say U8, right? Uh, if you're expecting a lot of posts, you can do U16, U32, right? Depending on the size. So I'll say U8 for unsigned integer, comma there. And uh, we also want a total post count. How many post counts does this guy have in total? Just in case you want to use that somewhere, you wait. So again, optional, this last one, but it's good to know. Okay, cool. So that is a user account. And I think that should be it. Um, let's go ahead and build. So a good way to test if this code is all valid is to build. And if you get any warnings, uh, there's something wrong. And usually I do because I forget a semicolon, I might type something wrong or I might forget, which I just remembered. Thanks for reminding me guys. I never said how much space does this take, All right? So there's some anchor documents out there that tells you how much space this could take. And uh, for strings, usually it's going to be four plus how long you think the string will be. And I'll say 256 bytes or character it's equivalent to one character, I think. And then we can do four plus avatar, which is an image URL. So which one thing would be longer, a name or an avatar? An avatar, you got it guys, you guys are geniuses, All right? So what I'll do is this, uh, what I did before was figure out what's the longest URL we can put. And this would be the longest URL, 2048. For pub key, this is gonna be consistent. It's usually 32. For U8, you can just say one and one, right? Cool. All right, so this is how much space it takes. We just add it all up and we get the number that we want, and that's how much space we get, right? So for space, I already, I already did the math. It's gonna be 2,312 bytes, all right? Uh, another thing that we need is something called an account discriminator. Uh, when you're storing stuff in memory, you wanna separate the stuff that you put in memory. So we do that by putting plus eight here, right? And again, I'm still learning what this means, but I just know it's necessary, so I'll do a plus eight. Cool. So now we have how much space. I believe this should be good. Let's just run it. Build. Cool. And there you go, right? I already forgot the semicolon up here. Let's go ahead and try again. You super needs a semicolon. Of course. Result. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, cool. I know what's going on now. All right, so that should be enough of the semicolon fiasco, but we didn't write any function. We set up the structs and the context, but I forgot. We gotta write some logic here. So let's quickly write some um, logic. So if I write CTX here, right, if you were to console log this in JavaScript, right, this doesn't work in Rust, but if I were to write this in JavaScript, we should see all this information, right? That's the context, all right? Uh, if I wanted to get the information of a user, I can say dot accounts or dot, yeah, dot accounts dot, do I want a authority, a program? I want the user account, user account. All right, so this gives me this, yeah? So with that in mind, let's uh, organize it with variables so it's easier. So we can say let user account is equal to and mute. 
All right. Writing mute here means that this variable can change. All right. In JavaScript, we can write let user is equal to Lance and then say user is equal to David. Right. And that would just be just fine. No errors. But if I did this in Rust, it'd say, hey, you didn't say this was mutable. Why are you changing it? All right. So here I'm letting Rust know, hey, uh, this can change. All right. And it can be account, ctx .accounts user account. All right. Just storing that in this variable and saying that, hey, this could change. It doesn't have to be Lance all the time. It could be whatever user is made, all right? Cool. So now we also want to set up uh, this authority variable. And of course, we say and mute and say ctx.account. Uh, and let's make sure it's accounts dot authority. All right, so it's kind of like an object with dot notation. Okay, cool. So now if I console log or say user account, it's basically the same as this line, right? So if this gives me this, how do I get the name, right? How do I get the name? If it's an object or it's like an object, we can say dot name, all right? So now I got access to the name. I can say here that the name will be Lance, all right? Why is this bad? If I just run this and you know put it into my blog app, why would this be bad? It would be bad because every user from now on will be called Lance. And that would be so confusing, right? We want to make this dynamic, right? So how to make this dynamic? Well, we can say it's equal to name, all right? Well, where's this coming from? Ah, now regular parameters, right? How we use them in JavaScript, it's going to be the same. Cool. With that logic, it's going to be just like how we did it before. So we can say user uh, account dot avatar is equal to avatar, right? And then we have a uh, user count dot last post ID is equal to, right? We don't have an ID parameter, but we do know that when I init uh, a user, it should start at zero. And when we first make a user, the ID should be zero. Okay, user account dot post count is equal to, Right, how many total posts should they start with? We can also say zero. Okay, and who should be the authority of this? All right, do we have access to that? We do, and it's in this variable. All right, we can say authority, right? But I want their public key, right? Like the CV, right? You can say to get it by saying dot key. It's a built-in method, and I can say semicolon. All right, so now we have a complete function. Uh, usually in JavaScript, we have something like a return here. The equivalent or the closest thing, it's not the same thing, is OK. Right? And if you wanted to return 5, you can put 5 here. But we won't return anything, so we'll just say, OK, building, build successful, let's go. Cool. And uh, they're saying, it's a, this war when you ever see a warning, that that is, your program will still run. It's just letting you know, like, hey, uh, just so you know, this should change. But it'll still run. So there's something with the post seed here. And it's right, it should be capital. Let's build one more time. Hey, okay, build successful, right? So now we can hit deploy. And this is gonna cost some Solana. So another thing I forgot to mention is with Solana Playground, there's this button here. Make sure you click it. You might've figured this out at this point in the tutorial, but it's gonna connect you to a Playground wallet. So this wallet is different than your Phantom. It's a built-in IDE. Notice how the address is different. Make sure you have Solana here. If you don't, you could take this address and bring it to Solana Faucet and do the same thing. Cool. So this is the address of this playground wallet. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy. Cool. So now it's going to deploy our smart contract, right? We wrote it right here and we're going to deploy it to the blockchain. All right. So if I were to erase all this, you guys should know what this means now. So we wrote our smart contract. We are deploying it to the blockchain as we speak with all the little code that we wrote in it. Awesome. Deployment successful. And now it's on chain and I, we don't, it's on the blockchain. But we're not going to call it yet from our app, right? One thing I want to do first is now that it's deployed, if you look at this test tube, we can test our function, right? So we can see if we can actually initialize a user, right? So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's say our name is Lancy, right? We'll just make it fun, Lancy. And then the avatar, all right, let's just use this. We already have this. Uh, we'll say, um, we'll copy this link here and we'll paste it. And now, again, if you didn't understand a word I said, maybe us testing it will help you understand, right? So this part you should, you should know, 
we're passing in land C as the name, and the avatar is going to be the string, or it's the image. But now you're going to see something called accounts here. Where is this coming from? That's not an argument. Technically, it is. It's right here. It's our context, right? Our context is the accounts, right? So what accounts do we need? Well, it looks like we need a user, the authority, and a system program. So let's open this up. We have a user account, an authority, and a system program. All right. If I were to ask you a question, uh, do we already have a user account? No. How can I tell? If you scroll down, you can see all the accounts that you set up, which is really cool, by the way. Uh, shout out to Acheron, the guy who was behind Beta Soul Playground. He taught me a lot about Solana and how this all works. But once you set up an account, you should see it here, and you can click this Fetch All button, and you should be able to fetch all the accounts. right? And right now, there shouldn't be any accounts or user accounts, so they're going to see nothing. Okay, cool. And what I'm going to do is actually, we can actually change this endpoint because sometimes we get an error. Let's do Genesis Go. Let's do a fetch all. Boom. So now you should see empty array because there is no object, right? There's no account. So if this, this, this exists just yet, no. How can we get it to exist or find a place to store my user account, which is this little square, right? How do we find a place for it? Well, we can get it from a seed. Right, so what seeds do we need? User seed, that's our first seed. But you don't want to write uh, user seed here, that's the variable. Or you want to go to constant and write the string. So what's the string here? It's going to be user. Okay, uh, what's the other seed? Authority key as ref, right? You might, for me, I didn't know this for a while, but this is going to be a pub key, a public key. And it's usually your key, the one who made this, right? So I can say add seed, say pub key, and copy your playground wallet, right? So that we can make a user based off your playground wallet, hit generate. And now this is the unique address where we can put our user. If this was, if this already had stuff at this address, it'll go to the next available one. Cool. So now for the authority, what we want to do is put my address, which should be the same as this. Cool. And if everything went well, we're going to hit test and it should work. Look at that init user pass. I love seeing that. I get really happy when that happens, especially at first try, which is awesome. So if you guys got in on the first try, give yourself a pat on the back, right? So how do we know it passed? Well, what should happen after we init a user? If I fetch all, we should have a user, right? When we fetch data from a database, like let's say Firebase, we can usually get it back as an object. So what kind of object did we get? We got an object with a public key, right? This is the user account. Right, we get this here, 67y, 67y. Then we have another property called account, which holds an object, which holds our user information. There's Lancy, my avatar, the authority, which is the same as my wallet, the last post ID, and post count. So when I create a post, what should happen to these two? It should increase, right? It should be one. All right, so keep that in mind for the next function. But other than that, that's how you make a function. All right? So, Take what you learned from this and let's put it to the test with our second to last, or actually our last function. All right. All right, so on to the next function. So let's go ahead and move to here. And to create a function, it's gonna be the same kind of pattern, guys. So how do we make a function? We can say pub fn. We can say the name, which will just be create, create post. Here is gonna be the parameters. We just know it takes in an arrow, result, and we write it like this. And here we go. This is the scope of the function, right? Now we can write what parameters it takes in. And as you know, with Rust, it will usually take a context, right? What kind of type does this expect? It's going to be context, and it's going to be create post. And as you know, create post doesn't exist yet. So what else does a post take in as a parameter? Let's think, it takes in a title and it takes in content, right? But we also need type. So if we need type, it's gonna be string. Content, also gonna be string, okay? From there, right, ooh, how's that? From there, we can say uh, the logic goes in here, but let's pause this and let's make create post. So I'm gonna scroll down. And to make create post, if you ever get lost, we can look at this as a template of how to make this struct, right? Like I said, it's important that you understand the patterns because it'll make this a lot more easier and simple to understand. Okay, cool. 
So to get started, we'll take our macro. To make an account, we'll say derive accounts. We also want to use instruction here. And then we could say pub struct, right? Name of the context, which is just create post. So create post. Oops. Say info. And then from here, we can do hashtag account, right? So how do we make an account? Remember, uh, Anchor does it for us when I write init. We initialize an account. Right, at this point, you might be asking, what account are we making, Lance? Well, we have so far a user account. Uh, we also need to make what I'll call a post account. So we could say pub post account, all right? Say account, we can say info, oops, comma here, we can say post account, right? And if I asked you, does this exist just yet? Nope, but we're gonna make it soon, right? So just keep that in mind, let's add a comma here and let's make the rest of these parameters. So we also wanna put in seeds for this. So if you remember in our constants, we have a post seed right here, okay? Post seed, we're gonna say post seed, right? We also wanna put in our authority dot key, oops, dot key, put comma key, dot key, dot as ref, right? And the issue with this seed is that every time I make a post, it's gonna generate the same image or the same uh, address, right? We don't want the same address over and over. So we gotta make it unique. So how will we differentiate that? Let's add another seed. That's what we can do. And for this, we're gonna use, um, if you go to states here, we're gonna use the last post ID, that number as part of the seed. So what that would look like is if I were to say, um, the custom seed is post, right? That's the string. It takes in our authority or our wallet address. And then it takes in a number of the last ID. So if the last post ID was three, this is the unique um, profile picture or the unique address or the public key, right? What if it was four, five, six, seven? See how it's a different one every time, right? We can, you know, replicate that with our code here by putting last post ID as part of the seed. So I'll put a comma and we gotta put it in a format that this likes, right? You can't just write uh, user account last post ID. I'm gonna say and user account. And I'm not gonna go too in depth in this because again, uh, it's not necessary. Just know that you need it in this format as you ate uh, dot as ref. Okay, cool. So with this, the format should be good. And user account that last post ID as you ate. Cool. And that's the seeds, right? And does it need anything else? Oh yeah, we need bump, right? You guys remember what bump does? That address has stuff already. It's not available to us. We can just say bump, go to the next one. Say payer is equal to authority. Okay, and then for space, you can set that equal to. How much space does a post account take? I don't know. Let's find out. Cool. So pausing that again. I know we're pausing a lot of stuff and coming back to it. So keep just keep track of everything. Right, but we'll we'll circle back. All right, so we want to make um, the post account state. So we could say pub struct post account, right? And another thing I want to mention is that you don't have to name this user account. You could just say users. You could just name this post, right? I'm just using this naming, naming convention to kind of help you guys understand uh, what has happened. All right, so this is essentially, this post account just represents each post. So each post account is a post, right? So I can say pub, right, what? Properties as a post account need an ID. You wait. Okay. All right, I'll save you some time. It's going to take in the title. It's going to take in content. It's going to take in a user. And this user will be pub key. And this pub key isn't going to be our wallet address. It's going to be the pub key of the user account, right? So if you remember, uh, where's our Solana playground? Oh, this is our playground. Whoops. If we fetch a user real quick, this is the address of the user account where that data lives, right? That is also gonna be stored in this post account right here. So this six, seven, it's gonna go here when I make a post. That way we can identify what user made that post, right? Cool. Then we also need the authority, which is gonna be different than the user, right? 
going to be the pub key of your wallet. So that would be our 6D here, right? Because this wallet should sign whatever we want to do with this post. If you want to delete this post later, right? That address should be able to do it, right? My friend David shouldn't be able to delete my post because he doesn't have the authority. Okay, cool. So what we know here is that this is 32, right? This is 32. Uh, content, right? Content could be really long, right? Especially if it's a blog. So again, um, we'll just make it a really long string. So we can do that. For title, it should be 256 as well. Right? Could it could be just like that. And this is going to be one. Cool. So if we add that all together, we can go back to lib. We can write the space now. And I already did the math. It's going to be 2376, I believe. Plus what, guys? What's the discount discriminator? It's going to be eight. You got it. Cool. That said, right, the payer is us. This is how much space it takes. And we're good to go. All right. Another thing that we need to know, all right, we need to get access to the user publicly. Like, how does my post know what this is, all right? Well, we can give it some context, all right? Ah, all right. So, how do we get the context of a user account? All right. We can just say account. Right, we can say mute, right? Because this user account could be different. It could be uh, me making a post. It can be David making a post. Right, it doesn't have to be just one person. Uh, the seeds, right? We can find the exact user account by passing in the same seeds, right? If I want to get my user account, I would pass in that string, the user, the user string, and my wallet address. But again, we can make it dynamic, right? Because if I passed in David's user address or wallet address, we get a completely different seed. We'll get his PDA, right? So bump, just in case. And another thing is we can write this has one. Has one authority and it's gonna be us, right? Cool, we could say pub user account. We could say account takes in info and a user account right here. Okay, and another thing we need is the authority and the system program. And usually when you make this, it's exactly the same as before. So go ahead, go to line 45, 48 for me, and you can just copy that. You can write it out. It's gonna be exactly the same no matter what. Cool, that's the struct for create posts. We have our constant, we use it. We have our state that we just created. And now, Let's make the logic. So let's work through the logic of creating a post, right? We need to uh, initialize the post. We need, what else we need to do? We need to uh, increment the post total and the ID set uh, properties. Okay, let's do that then. So to do that, it's gonna be very similar to how we initialize the user here. Let's make a variable. Say let post account and how do we get the post account information from this context All right well we first we need the context then we need to go to the accounts and now we have access to post account user account authority and system program which one do we need we need dot post account i believe yep dot post account semicolon okay now with that logic, how do we get a user account? CTX.accounts.user account. Simple enough? Cool. Last thing we need, and we don't have to do this, but you know, again, just for consistency, uh, and mute CTX.accounts.authority. Boom. Cool. So what are the properties that we need to initialize? We need ID, title, content, user authority. And that order. So if we do post account, right, we have this object. How do we get the ID, right? We do post account dot ID. And what do we want to set it equal to, right? If we set this equal to zero, every post will have an ID of zero and that's not good, right? It should be, right, the last user ID, right? So this first one, based on that, it should be zero. After we make a post, it should be one, two, three. Right. So how do we get access to this user account from here? Luckily, we set that up with this variable and us doing this, this user account. 
we have the context, right? That's why it's important. So if you have the context, we can say that user account variable dot last post ID, right? So there you go. That was the probably the hardest one, right? So then we can do post account dot title is equal to our our argument title post account dot content equal to content and then we also want the user who made it right so user we need access to the user account again which we do we can say user account and if you look at the object right we don't need to do dot account right we can just say uh, user account dot key in parentheses to get this public key make sense right us doing dot key is getting this putting it here cool okay semicolon and then last but not least post account authority is equal to authority dot key right? that's how we get our wallets public key and we're not done yet remember we need to increment the post total and the id all right so there's an easy way to do this or you can just do the math yourself or we can do it last post ID is equal to user account that last post ID right and we can do dot a built-in method here checked add right and because of the semicolons uh, you can format it like this dot oops dot checked add one then dot unwrap Cool. And remember, don't put a semicolon here, or else you're splitting this dot on wrap, right? You want to put it right here. So basically, uh, it's going to increase post ID by one. Or if you wanted to increase it by two, you put two, right? So it's just a built in method that would take this number, which is zero, add one, and unwrap it to a format that uh, Rust likes. Okay? So that's not it, though. We also need to do the total, right? Increment that by saying that post count is equal to user count dot post count dot checked, oops, checked add one dot on wrap. Cool. All right, so we incremented two things the last post ID, the post count, right, which will make um, this seed validation more dynamic right we're not gonna get the same seed you don't have to rely on bump all the time right and last but not least we can say okay that's it awesome and that's it that's creating a post guys all right this should be i hope this is very easy to follow right let me know down below all right drop a like comment down below like thank you lance right and again if you want there's gonna be harder and harder ones than this right we can look at airbnb uh, we can look at the to-do app, which is just slightly this harder than this. All right, let's go ahead and build and see if there's any errors. Okay, cool. Post account. Instruction. I spelled that wrong. Instruction. That happens to me a lot. Okay. Trait. not satisfied okay oh that's right have to put the account here i have to tell them hey this is an account oops this is going to use the account macro and we need to derive the default and this should be a lot better cool all right different errors i can live with this uh cannot borrow as multiple i think i know why already yep this is why we need the and mute perfect example of that and mute there you go build successful right cool so i will just refresh this so you don't see the errors you could see that if i build now boom build successful so all i did was make sure in your states you have this account and derive default otherwise it's not going to be satisfied with just this next in your create post make sure this is mutable otherwise it's going to be like hey you can't change you can't change what's in there cool another cool thing about solana is that usually with Solidity, once you deploy to the blockchain, you can't really add more code onto there, right? With Solidity, at least. I don't know if it changed since I've recorded this video, but the cool thing about Solana is uh, you can take your copy of the smart contract, right? 
make a new lines, new structs, everything like that. And deploy all of that together, right? You can update your contract with this new stuff. Okay. That's the cool part about this. All right, that's why it says upgrade here instead of deploy. So let's upgrade, right? Now that we know that this is stable and, you know, it's successful. And then let's test it and we should be good to go. Okay, it's almost done. Bam, deployment successful, right? If you look at our test now, create post is there and post account is there as well, right? We can do a fetch all. There is one user, Lancy, right? And then there's a post account. No post, right? That makes sense. We haven't created a post yet. So let's create a post. And again, let's break it down, right? It takes in two arguments, title and content, right? We can say, uh, welcome to my blog, right? Content, this is my first post, right? What, is, what else do we need? Is this it? We need to provide the context. So when we go to accounts, right, we need to put information for all of these, right? So I'm not gonna start with post account. Let's start with authority, right? Who has authority of this post? Me, my address, this wallet does, right? System program, it's there by default, right? User account, we need to put this. Do I need to make a new user account associated with this post? Let's see. Is this initializing a new one? Nope. We're reusing one based off the seed, right? So basically what I'm saying is we want to use this, 67Y, right? So what you could do is just copy that, put it here, right? Or you can get it from seed again, put in user, put in your authority, and you should still get the same number, right? 67Y. Cool. But now for the post account from seed, right? This doesn't exist yet. We want to find a place to put our post data. Right, so for the seeds, it's all right here. The answers are in front of us. We want to say post, because I believe that's the string I wrote. Yep, post. We want to put the pub key, which is our key. And to make this a unique uh, PDA, we need to add a U8 here, right? How do I know it's U8? Because I said as U8, and it should be a number of the last ID. So what was the last ID uh, of this? Zero, so I'm putting zero. If we already had a post, if this is our second post, it should be one, right? but it's zero. So let's generate that. This is the, will be the public key where that post information will live. Let's hit test, hopefully it passed. Let's go, create post passed, right? How do we know? Let's fetch this and bam, this is our post, right? There we go, right? Welcome to my blog, this is my first post. Now, that said, this is it. This is our Solana program, guys. All we need to do now, right, is like let's say we made our account. We also made a couple posts, right? All we need to do now is use our endpoint to call these functions, right, to create more posts, right? And then we will use our endpoint, right, to get the program and get fetch all the posts associated, right? all the users, all the posts associated to our app, right? And that is what the final part is. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. Cool. So with that out of the way, I'm super proud of you guys. Let's go ahead and clean up some things here. And let's say you guys want to make a brand new program, right? You don't want to use these users. You want to start fresh, right? We can do that, All right? So to show you guys how to do that, right? We're going to go to this toolbar, the build and deploy section and go into program credentials. And let's say you want to use a different smart contract right? But you want the same logic, right? You just don't want, you just don't want, you want to start fresh. You don't want any of these accounts. Uh, we didn't set anything to delete them or to close these accounts. So what we could do is we could say new, right? This is our program address right now, our program ID. If I hit new here, right? If you don't save this, it'll be lost forever. I'll, you'll forget what this program ID was. If you don't care, you can just hit generate. And this is our new program ID. So when I hit build, this is going to change. Boom. Everything stayed the same, but this changed. Why, why is that significant? Because now this program has no uh, accounts associated with it. So now it's kind of like we started fresh, right? And it's not deployed, so let's deploy it. Let's put this smart contract on the blockchain. All right, so deployment successful, right? We put our new smart contract with its new address on the blockchain. And now I can prove it to you. Let's see if Lancey's still there. He's gone. 
and any post, he's gone, all right? And that's okay. Why is that okay? Because now we're gonna make a user, make a post from our very own app. So get excited for that. Let's get it set up, okay? So one of the first things I want you guys to do is head over here, go to your IDL and hit export, all right? When you hit export, and if you're using Chrome, you should see an IDL.json in your download. So go ahead and go to search for this IDL.json in your downloads, double click it, and it should open it up in VS Code. So I'm just gonna make this bigger. If I do a save here, oops, cool. So take a look at this. Basically, it's a JSON file, right? That represents our Solana program, right? The instructions, this is our init user function, create post function, right? It has all our accounts. Right, all the information we need, right? We need this IDL and need to put it in our front end, right? So go ahead and press Control A. Uh, you can press Copy, or if you want to be really sure, press Cut, right? Control X, and go over to your IDL.json. So this IDL.json right here is different. It's the same thing. This is the demo IDL, all right? And the only difference between the one you just copied and this one is that it has metadata address all right so we want to copy that let's go ahead and paste it underneath this json right and what we could do just to keep the same formatting right this is important you don't need to have metadata address on there but the way we're grabbing the address uh is through this file so i'm gonna oops i'm gonna copy this even up to the comma and i'm gonna bring it all the way down here And what we'll do next is let's erase the old one. All right, cool. Let's hit save and, and X out the downloads version. And I'll hit don't save just in case you need to get it back later. Cool, so let's just go over this, right? This is essentially, right, our new IDL with the old address of the demo smart contract, right? So what we need to change is this right here. This shouldn't be FB. All right, this should be CSX. So let's copy that and paste it here. So now we're using the updated IDL with the correct uh, metadata address. So let's hit save, and that very first step is done, right? The next thing that you're gonna need to do is head over to your context and head over to blog.jsx. This is what's important here. Um, we need to understand how context works. Okay, cool. So to give you a visual of how context works, let's go back into our program and let's move to our app here. All right, we can erase this to avoid confusion, but let's say this is our app, right? And usually with React, right? When you make a variable, let's say a user, right? This holds Lancy or my user information. You create an app and you can pass it down as a prop to dashboard, so then dashboard knows what user it is. If you don't pass it as a prop, if you say user in here, it's gonna be like, what the hell is user, Lance? You didn't tell me, All right? So that's why you need to pass it down as props, All right? In React, let's say we had like multiple components, right? On, uh, as a child, if I were to bring, if I need to bring user all the way down to this bottom component, you have to go like prop, pass it down as a prop, pass it down as a prop, prop it down as a prop. And that could lead to issues way down the line. This is what's known as prop drilling. Right, so there's solutions to this actually. So the solutions is using something called Redux or uh, creating context, right? And context is essentially, think of it like a little store or a bubble, right? Uh, we call their context blog.jsx. And I can create the user here, right? Or in other words, I can fetch a user in my context, right? And the cool thing about uh, using context is that I don't need to pass it down as a prop. I could still, but I could call it from whatever I want, right? I just have to bring that context into here, right? So that's what's the beauty of context, okay? So let's work on our blog context, okay? So what do we have so far, all right? If you didn't know how to create context, this is how you do it. Use the React hook. And then you just need to make a provider for that context. Remember the wild provider? All right, we set it here. And let's say, now let's say you wanna make a variable or a function, right? Remember that visual I just did? Like this would be the code equivalent. Let's say Lance, all right? Cool, or let's actually just make this even more weird so you understand. Dog, all right? Cont user, 
it's a dog. All right, and better yet, let's make this an object. All right, we can say name is uh, dog, All right? Avatar. All right, it's not a dog, but we can get it from Unsplash. So let's go here. I'm gonna quickly get an image of a dog. You don't have to do this step. Say dog. This pug is perfect. Actually, let's use this one. Copy image address. Go to our code and say that the avatar is this a very long string. And let's say I want to use this static user, right? Anything that I want to bring outside of our context, put it inside here in line 24, this value right here. So I'll say user, okay? And let's say I want to bring this user into my app, right? Well, not app, sorry, our dashboard, right? All you need to do is use blog, right? So you can go down below here and you can say import use blog from your context and then say const curly brackets to the structure equal to use block right and then from here you say what you want right let's say i had like five things in here but i only wanted user you can just say give me just the user here and then from there let's erase this right we're erasing our static user data and saying static user from the blog all right let's see if it worked Look at that, it's dog now, right? So now my little drawing, right? That's the application, right? We got user and we're putting it into dashboard. All right, static, this is still static. We still need to make it fetchable, okay? Cool. So now we have static user from the blog context, but that's the gist of it. We're gonna be building out this blog context with, right? We need the functions from the Solana smart contract and we need to fetch all the accounts. So that's the goal with this context. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to our blog.jsx and this is where the majority of the code is gonna be written. Um, everything on dashboard.js is pre-set up for you. We just need to write the logic, right? And if you're interested in learning more React stuff and Next.js stuff, right? Leave a comment down below. I could, I'll be happy to go over that with you. The focus again is just the Web3 Solana code. Okay, with that said, let's keep it going. So we are in back at the blog context, right? Uh, one of the first things I like to do is let's get our program key, right? And by program key, I mean our address, right? So uh, what I mean by that, if you go to, let's see, our app, go to our program, we need this address, right? Because this is, we need to first use our endpoint uh, and then get this program, which will then help us get everything else, right? And I could just hard code this in here, but I hard coded it in our RDL, so let's do that. Okay, so to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is get some imports. Uh, one of the imports that I'm gonna get here is star as anchor from, hold on a second, from quotes project, oh sorry, at project, at project serum anchor. There you go, that's what we want. And basically I'll get everything from anchor and call it anchor. Okay, first thing. Uh, the next thing is let's import another hook here, custom hook, and say use anchor wallet from Solana wallet adapter. And there's a couple of things that we're gonna need here. It's gonna be use connection and use wallet. Amazing. Okay, next we need import public key, right? And then we also need system program, right? Again, don't worry about all these imports yet. They're gonna come into play as we go. Okay, um, and there's a couple of functions that we need to make. So again, this was given to you guys, but if you go into this functions folder, you're gonna see something called uh, get random name, right? This is a function that we set up for you guys, right? This is getting a library called name generator to give us a random name, right? You could set this up to give uh, yourself a name, like make an input field, like a modal and put in your name and sign up, right? Here, we'll just get you a random name and we'll get you a random avatar using these functions, okay? Uh, my challenge for you guys, if this is making sense to you guys, is make it so that you put an input field and then you can sign up a unique user. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get a random user to save some time, 
okay so to get that information we could say import uh, get avatar URL from this path right cool we also need to get random name so let's get random name I'm just importing everything we need get random name sorry spelled it yep from sorry C functions get random name perfect cool so we have the random name uh, what another thing we're gonna need oh yeah we're going to need to import the IDL right so remember the IDL we set up right here we need to bring that in we can say uh, import IDL from oops source slash I believe it's just IDL.json perfect and to fetch the program addresses or the PDAs we can say import find uh, program address sync from project CM anchor right and then we want to import uh, UTF-8 this is for formatting purposes later on and with that uh, we should be good to, for now we might need some react hooks later on but we'll import those when we need it but awesome got the blog context that's fine let's go ahead and get program key all right so to get program key let's make a variable and let's make this all caps program key is equal to uh idl right and remember in our idl how do we get this we say dot metadata dot address right and what type would this give us a string exactly right because this is a string duh right but we need this as a public key right so we're going to use this import public key and we'll say new public key parentheses right this is going to generate a public key based off this address that's all we're doing here amazing cool so we have our public key right we are using blog right turning context cool right we're basically taking our our context putting it in a hook and then using that hook in dashboard that's why it says use block okay cool so in let's see in our blog provider right still have static dog we can leave that for now until we get an actual user but underneath this i'm trying to think let's set up uh, our anchor wallet right here so we're going to make use of this use anchor wallet right here and underneath user i'm going to say const anchor wallet is equal to the hook use anchor wallet which we're going to use and place this somewhere else later on all right this is one of our parameters for something okay so we need a wallet we're using anchors default wallet we'll say const connection all right i'm destruction connection from use connection all right i'm gonna get a connection whoops not from i keep saying from should be equals but this is from use connection all right and we also need to say const public key all right, public key, oops, not the capital one. We need the lowercase one. And set this equal to use wallet, All right? So this this one specifically, I don't know why I'm putting semicolons, it's because of Rust, but this use wallet hook is gonna get us public key. And if I were to console log it, uh, it should tell me the public key dot to string. All right, let's see what this is. All right, anytime you wanna see what this all means i just console log it that's how i usually go about it let's see if we can see it from here oh oh can i read properties when the oh okay so i didn't like that uh let's just try without the two string first no okay yeah so it's null right now so you can't tell null to string but if i connect now I'll enter my password, of course. Test one, two, four. Should have a wallet now. Okay, that was weird. I just refreshed a couple of times, but uh, I had to log into my wallet and we're good to go. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, back to blog.js. We console log the public key. Inspect element. Let's see if it's null. 
There we go, right? So notice how it's not null anymore, it's an actual public key. But if I were to do dot to string now, there you go, CVR, right? CVR, right? So that tells me that this public key, right? This use wallet hook always knows what wallet's connected and it will tell me the public key of that wallet connected when I say public key, okay? Connection is our connection, whether that's DevNet or, N or Quick Note and uh, what wallet we're using, it's an anchor wallet. So we're gonna be using this for something in just a second. Next, we can say const program right, is equal to use, and we don't have this hook, but we need to get use memo. And so I'm gonna say, uh, I'm actually gonna format like this because we might need a couple different things from React. So let's do comma and say use memo, okay? So program, use memo, takes in an empty function, cool. And what we want to do with this is if anchor wallet exists, right, we want to say that the provider is equal to new anchor dot anchor provider, right? We have to pass in um, the connection, right, that we set up up here. We need to pass in the anchor wallet. We need to pass in uh, anchor itself. And you can say anchor dot anchor provider dot default on options. All right, don't need to fully understand this just yet. You just need to uh, set it up. Cool, so that's our provider, All right? We wanna return from this uh, new anchor dot program, right? Which will have our IDL our program key and our provider that we just set up cool and we're gonna run this uh, when the connection changes or for whatever reason the anchor wallet changes okay so when I say program when I console log this it should give me something console log program program here let's see if we get anything there you go so we got our actual program. So if we open this up, we can see all the accounts, right? We can see the instructions, right? This program has create post, init user, right? What accounts does this program have? It has a post account and a user account. So when I say program dot account, right? Look at that, we see all the accounts associated with it. So that's how you get the program, right? That was all the setup for this. When you say, when I say lowercase program, I mean, the program and all its information. You with me? Cool. All right, so we got the program. The next thing I wanna do is set up a use effect, all right? So I don't believe I have a use effect hook set up yet. So let's import use effect. Hope it's not like that. Cool. And if you don't know what use effect is, essentially it's a React hook, right? That's gonna set up things when our component uh, first loads when that component updates, or when that component gets removed. So basically, what do you want to do when your component or your app loads, all right? So when, what I wanna do right, is set an empty function here, and let's just say uh, const start, let's make a function. We'll make this asynchronous because we're gonna need to do that later. Let's say I wanna, when my, whenever my app loads, we have to run this start function and say uh, starting app and fetching data right that's what our start function is doing i can say uh start this and then we can put an empty right here because this is going to make it only run when it first loads once cool so what we should see starting app and fetching data all right so that's essentially what we're doing here right i'm setting up my app so what do we want this start function to do really Right, it's is to check if there is a user, right? If there is a user, get or fetch posts. If no user, what do we want to do? Right? Set state to false and set state to false, right? If no user, set state to false and we need a button and need a button to init user. All right, we don't have to set up the button in here, but we just need to check if there's a user. 
that's what this is gonna do. If there's a user, get all the posts. If there's no user, just keep the state as false. So that's what I wanna do to start. You with me? Cool, so uh, how do we get started with this then, all right? Well, the first thing I wanna do is uh, if, if there's a program, right? Because uh, if this if there's, this doesn't exist, there's no point, right? We can't get the accounts, right? You saw me do program.account. So we need to make sure this exists. And we also, when I say and, both things have to be true. So we also need a public key. So what I'm setting up here is a check that says, hey, if there is a program, and if my wallet is connected, right? It's essentially what this check is doing. Then we can write that uh, logic here, oops, which is check if there's a user. All right, so how do we check if there's a user? Let's set up a try catch block. Okay. Cool. So we're going to try if something works. If it doesn't, if we try to, a promise, and if that promise doesn't work, right, it's going to catch it and it's going to console.log the error. Okay. So what do we want to try? Well, we want to try to see if there's a user. Check if there is a user account. All right. So let's do all this. The way I like to write this is think about what do we know. Right. And you do this with every single coding problem. This is problem solving right here. Check if there's a user account. If I go back to my Solana Playground, go to my testing. With this current program that we're all using in my front end now, is there a user account? No, there is not. I fetched it, there's no user account. Is there a user account with this wallet address that I made? No, hasn't been made, all right? So what do we know? That there is no user, right? But we can check if there's a user, right? By um, checking if it exists, right? On the blockchain. How do we do that? Well, let me show you. It's gonna be involve this find program address. We're gonna find if that address exists and if it has information we need, okay? Check if the account exists, we need five program address. So to do so, we can say await uh, find program address sync, right? And the cool thing is that you do is put seeds here, right? So basically, if I want to find a user account, right? I just need to get the seeds of it, right? And what seeds does a user account take? So I use this as my cheat sheet, as my guide. It takes in a user seed or a string of user and that authority, right? So check. So how do I get this string? And how do I get this, my authority or my check if there's a user with my public key, All right? So this is the fun part. Let's see if we can put it together. Okay. So what we need to do is go into here, make sure this is an array, right? And one of the first seeds is utf8 dot encode. All right, this is the uh, import from here utf8 dot encode the string user that's like me going in the test and writing user All right how many seeds does a user account need two the second one is my wallet address think back what did i say holds my wallet address aha public key yes but we need it in a format that the seeds like right so we need to use a built-in method here called to buffer amazing cool and uh after you put the seeds it does take in a program id so we can get this by saying program right this is the all the information of program dot program id okay so this is gonna basically is async right which lets us do an wait so basically wait for this function to run and when it's done you can do the next thing right Another thing you want to do here is do some destructuring because this will give back an array. And from that array, right, we want to get a variable. I'm going to call that variable user PDA, right? This would get us the uh, address, right? But we need to get that, take that address and fetch the account with that address, get the information at this PDA, right? So how do we do that? Well, the next thing we need to do after waiting for that is await program, All right? We're getting the information of our program, dot account, right? So what accounts do we have? User account, right? Dot, and this is a built-in method. I don't expect you to know this one, but you could see fetch, 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 right? Fetch 
user PDA. Basically, get me all the user accounts with this address. And how many should that be? It should be one, right? Cool. So we want to set this to a variable, right? Because I don't want to say this every time I want to do that. Const user. So let's say there is no user here, right? We can just say const log instead of the error, right? We'll say no user. So it's easier to read, right? That's the only reason I'm doing this. If there is a user though, right? then we can get the posts, right? But at the moment, we know there's no user. So let's see, what do you think is gonna run? This console log no user or this, uh, you know, this fetching user, let's see. All right, no user, All right? So we have no user. Okay, so if we have no user, then it should just be blank, All right? Okay. So now the first part of our use effect is done, right? And we can now change this data, right? We don't need the static user anymore, All right? Let's make a state, All right? So let's go up here, let's say use state comma, and then uh, we can write that all within the provider. We can say const user, or actually make it like this, const user set user is equal to use state and the initial state of a user um, it should be like an empty object okay and I know there's see the squiggly because there's already a user here so let's erase that and this will still work because this is called user and this user right here is still here okay cool so let's see what happens now now we don't have an image or a name, right? And if we were to write down this logic, right, if there's no user, we should be able to create one. So that means we need a button here to initialize user. Okay. Keep that in mind. And how do we keep track if something's initialized? Well, what we could do is make another state. We can say const initialized is and then set initialized right that's equal to use state as well and the default state for initialized is false okay cool so let's work with this logic okay so at this point uh in my code should the user be initialized should it be true no is it true yet no is it true yet no if it's here right this should still be false and you don't have to write this in necessarily but let's just put it here for safety set initialized is false when should it be true well it should be true if there is a user or if this exists all right technically uh this should be empty yep doesn't break still so it's empty so if there is a user from here and it didn't go to the catch right then we can set initialized right to true you with me so far cool all right so now let's make a button that shows up when initialize is false it should say initialize user all right and then if it's true create a post all right you should only create a post if there's a user so which buttons do we have we have create post but we don't have initialize a user so how do we get that? Let's refer back to our drawing. We need to go to the dashboard. That's where that button lives. You with me? Cool. All right, so we're going to the dashboard. Let's make a new button. So basically, there's something called conditional rendering here. If we're connected, right, show me the create post button. If we're not connected, we see that connect button. Right? I showed this way back at the beginning of the video. Okay, what I want to happen next is uh, a conditional rendering for this, right? So basically, if there's no, uh, let's do it like this, All right? So to start conditional rendering, you need to make put this in a JSX, right? Put this in curly brackets, I mean, and we'll take everything in here. So we can say, X this out, boom. So I just erase that for a second, and hmm. Yeah, we could put that there. Cool. So let's just say initialized 
is our condition. If initialized is true, right, we can load this. This colon right here is if it's false, right? So if it's true, we want to show the image. And if it's false, we need a button here. So I'm going to copy this uh, button here for connecting. Let's do the. Let's just copy this button. And let's go here, paste, uh, on click, it's set show model true, that's fine, but we wanna say initialize user. Oh, okay, so that means we can take this and put it up here. Cool, so basically I moved the image out of there. Hold on. So basically I move the image out of the condition, right? So if initialize is true, create post. If initialize is false, initialize user. And right now it doesn't actually initialize the user, but let's see if it works. Uh, oh, it's gonna tell me initialize is false. So we haven't brought it in yet, but let's make a static version. Let's say initialize right here. Initialized is true. So which one should we see if it's true? You see creates post. What if it's false? You see initialize user, so that's good. All right, so now we don't need the static one. We can get the uh, dynamic one, all right? So how do we bring the initialize to our dashboard? You can just say initialized right here. Oh, and don't forget the comma. And go to your dashboard, go to the use blog, and say initialized. So now we'll see initialized user. And it's not gonna work because I didn't make the function for it. Okay, cool. Awesome. So this is basically conditional rendering inside conditional rendering, All right? Awesome. So this will pop up, this will be filled once we fetch the user and we initialized it. Okay, so cool. All right, so we set up our use effect, but it's not done, right? We haven't got all the posts yet, right? But I'm gonna just stop that because we should make the rest of the logic of initializing a user, right? That shouldn't be in our start function. It can be, right? You can make it like, uh, right when you load the app, it's like, hey, you have to make a user, sign up, All right? But let's give our users a little bit more choice, right? And we kind of set it up so that when I click initialize user, that's when we run this init user function, right? So let's learn how to make that function on the front end, okay? So underneath my use effect, right, we can say const init user, right? This is not different from the front end, uh, the Solana smart contract function. This is a front end function, right? I'll show you the part where we use the Solana code. Okay, cool. So make a standard function like so, make it asynchronous. And again, I'll have my standard checks here, right? I can't, uh, it's kind of like over engineering, but I shouldn't be able to initialize a user if there's no program and uh, my wallet isn't connected. You won't even see the button if the wallet's not connected, but again, just an extra check. Cool. So if there's a program, if there's public key, let's get to the logic. We can set up a try catch. Okay, because we're dealing with promises here. Okay and a console.log, error, perfect. All right, so when we initialize a user, what do we wanna try? Well, we wanna try calling the Solana smart contract function, All right? So how do we do that, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna need is all the parameters, All right? So what are the parameters? If you go to Solana Playground, go to init user, the first thing it's gonna need, it's a name and an author, an author avatar. And then we need the account. So let's deal with name and avatar first, okay? So to get name and avatar, we can just say const name is equal to get random name. And where did the hell did this function come from? Uh, I'm importing it from a folder, right? So what does this function do? It gets us a it returns a random name. I'm storing it in this variable, okay? Let's get an avatar. Const avatar is equal to get avatar URL. It's gonna get me a random avatar. Cool, so those are our two parameters, right? Well, now we have the arguments. 
we need our accounts now. Right, so we need a user account and an authority. And again, when we were testing, right, and this is where all the understanding comes in, does that user account exist yet? It does not. So we need to get it from the seed. Right, so essentially, we're going to do the same thing here. We can actually copy and paste this whole thing, this const user PDA thing. It's the same thing. We need to find if there is an address there. If there's not, we'll use that address. That's the goal. Right, so the first time we're writing this line, we're checking if it's there. The second time we're like this time we're using it to put information here and run our function. Okay, so we're going to use our PDA like so, and then we can say await program. All right, so remember what is program? It is the variable that holds all the information about our, my program, right? Uh, how do we call the instructions or the functions within that program? You say dot methods, right? And again. We can chain this by saying dot within dot methods. You got to say what methods you want to use. Well, I want to init a user. Okay. When we init a user, we need to pass in the actual arguments. So if you remember, it's name, avatar, right? And then another comma here. Well, actually, I don't need a comma here. What you could do is uh, after this line at the end of it, hit enter again and do dot accounts. This dot accounts. This is the context, right? The context that you're gonna pass in. So I'm gonna put curly brackets there and let's write what we need. We need a user account and authority. So you need to write that exactly. You can say user account, and then you wanna say authority. Cool. But what is the user account? Do we have the PDA? Like, are we using our seeds? We do. We did that right here. And we stored it in this variable. So we can say the user account is user PDA. All right, this, this part right here, or this part right here specifically, is the same as me doing from seed user and then doing pub key like so. All right, generate this 3IUL, that's basically what user PDA is, and I'm putting it in as user account. For authority, it's actually pretty simple. You can say public key, and that's it, because it's already a public key. And last but not least, system program. Uh, make sure it's lowercase with the capital P. And you can just write system program dot program ID, right? And we're getting this from our import system program right here, Solana Web3. Cool. So we did it. We passed in all the accounts, right? And uh, last but not least, though, last chained method is dot RPC. If there's a user, are we initialized now? Yes. So we can use our use state here, say set initialized to true, which will then in turn. Um, update our react app so that this initialize true we see create post instead of initialize user so it's all coming together all right, i hope it's making sense and another thing i like to do is make another state and say const uh, transaction pending all right we need a state for this it's basically a loading state set transaction pending Okay, and default is false, right? Same reason we use this, it's another flag, right? Basically, uh, when I init a user, we should set transaction pending to true, right? And when it's all done, right, after this catch, we can actually add a finally and say set transaction pending to false, right? It's done loading, okay? Cool. And while we're at it, we can set that up in our use effect as well. You can say, uh, oh, I already said it. Oh, I put it in our use effect. Well, that's perfect. We need to do that anyways. We also want to do it here. Uh, try set transaction pending true and add a finally to our init user one. Set transaction pending false. Cool. All right. I think that's it. Yep. Init user. And now let's bring it out of our context by doing this. Go to our dashboard. Okay, we're at a dashboard, and now we can get it from our use blog init uh, user. And where do we want to use this function? Well, that should be pretty obvious. We should use it here when I say init uh, user. All right, we don't have to pass anything in because it gets passed in inside this function. Cool. So now let's save and now let's hope it all works. So, again, for good luck. Let's restart the process. We're connected. There is no user because our use effect, so it's still an initialized user. I click this, 
and nothing. Illegal arguments undefined. All right, let's take a look. On click, we want to init a user. So let's try, let's make it empty first. Let's see if this just runs. So save and let's just say, want to log initializing user. Now this is how I troubleshoot stuff. Initializing user, okay, cool. So this function is running for sure. Mm, what point does it doesn't like? So let's take out this. Let's console log the user PDA. Legal arguments undefined. So that tells me that there's something wrong with this right here. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so I was doing some troubleshooting and I realized that it's nothing to do with this. This is perfectly fine. My issue was that before, this didn't have anything, right? When we generate a random name, I wanna get an avatar based on that name. So once we put name here, right, you can see all of my testing, right? We could do initialize user and bam, we actually see in a transaction, right? But this doesn't enough to make sure that it works. Uh, we have to go to console, right? And you know what, let's refresh it. And let's uh, click approve. Well, actually, let's cancel this first. And let's click initialize user, all right? This is a good sign, but it doesn't mean it's done. It said approve, awesome. Okay, I wasn't sure if that worked, but let's see if there's a user account generated here. There was, stoic pastor. That is amazing. So it did work, right? Uh, I'm not sure why it's not working here yet. Oh, I know why. All right, so it did work, but the reason it didn't show up is because our use effect, right? So now we do have a user, All right? So if I correct, correct here, this should say create post for some reason, it's not. Unless it's still static, let's see. Dashboard, initialized, initialized in our blog set initialized initialized lies add wow i spelled that wrong completely put the a in the wrong spot so what's going on here oh yeah because my use effect i know why okay cool so the reason why we don't see a change is because my use effect is only running once why is it only running once? Because you can make your user effect only run one time when you load the app, that's it, right? If I put this, what we call a dependency module there, right? Let's say you don't want it to run once, you want it to run once when you first load, but again, when program changes, when the public key changes, or when there's a transaction pending. So it's it save now, Let's see, cool. And now this isn't actually running. Let's see. Set transaction pending to true. If there's a user set initialized. Ah, there we go. Cool. And then I had to make the spelling correct. So there, if this, if this is true, if we see create post, that means there is a user, right? But there's no user yet because we need to set that, right? So again, uh, user is empty, but we can set the user here. Let's say set user is equal to user. Let's hit save, and bam, there it is, stoic pasture, right? So we were successfully able to create a user, and now we need to create the post. So the next thing I wanna do is set up the create post functionality, right? So there's a couple things that we need to do to set that up, and one of them, we'll need to look at our dashboard and look at our static data, right? There's something called a show modal here that when I create a, when I click create post, this flag should turn to true, right? So we have static uh, data here. Let's make them real. So to make them real, I'm gonna go here, say const uh, show modal and set show modal and say equals uh, use state and we'll set that equal to false first, right? From here, we can just bring it in, show modal, set show modal, right? And once that's here, we can delete this. Don't save yet though, All right? And we want to be able to bring it from here. So we can say uh, show modal set show modal, perfect. 
So now we shouldn't see any errors. If I click this, boom, look at that, All right? We can see it perfectly like so. Create post, boom, X, boom. All right, again, this was the modal itself is given to you. We just set up the functionality, All right? What I want to happen is for us to write something and I hit post, All right? If I click post, it doesn't actually make a post on Solana, All right? Nothing. All right, we want to set up the same way we initialize user. Let's set up how to create a post now. Okay, so same thing as before. We're going to scroll down to our blog.jsx and underneath init user, we can go ahead and make another function. So just like before, we'll give it the same name, create post equals async. Okay, uh, we'll do our standard check here. Again, optional and oops and public key right there's multiple ways to do one thing you'll realize that as you code more and more so if you have a better way that's more efficient than mine please share it down below in the comments or i'm happy to hear it so cool if there is a program we can set transaction pending to true right for our state and then we can do a try catch and at any point our try fails it will catch that error and we can console log that error. Okay, cool. So what do we wanna try? We wanna try calling our Solana function, right? So let's review what do we need? Well, if I want to create a post, right? For my arguments, I'm gonna need a title and content. And I'm also going to need post account, user account, authority and system program. So let's talk about the arguments first. So unlike init user, where we got the arguments from within the front end function right here, we're actually gonna pass them straight up. So we can just say title, oops, title and content here, okay? Now to get the arguments now, I mean the accounts, let's open that up. Does user account exist? Yes, it does. We're gonna be using this user account, right? The user account with my wallet address, CVR. Okay, so that exists. Does the post account exist? Not yet, right? We wanna to write to that address. Does authority exist? Yes, it does. All right, so how do I get the user, All right? So we, I'm copying and pasting this, but it's literally the same thing, right? You can put this right here, All right? So this is us fetching the user, All right? Find program address sync, get that user, right? And it will exist, and that account will exist at that address, right? Because we made it before. The only time we call this function is if it does exist, right? The next thing that we need, which I won't copy paste, is the post PDA. And guess what? To get the post PDA, just like in our test, we're going to get it from our seed. And what seed does it need? Post seed, or po authority, and the user's last post ID. Okay. So do we have all those information? Let's find out. So we say find program address sync, all right here, comma program dot program ID. Right, I believe that's what we do. And now for the seeds, all right, we can copy this UTF-8 code, but this time instead of user, our string is post, all right? For our authority, we can just say public key, so it should match. And we say to buffer to get it in a format that it likes. And now, how do we get the last ID. If we were to do this with uh, on Solana Playground, we say post, we say pub key, right? We just put in our pub key, and then we get U8. We need to get uh, a number here, and based on this zero, it should generate three T2. This is the address that we're going to write to. It's always going to be the same. It's predictable in Solana, right? It's not random. This address, okay? But how do we get the user's last ID? Well, do we have access to the user is what I would ask myself. And we actually do, right? Where do we have access to user? In this check right here, right? If there's a user, right? If I were to console log this, right? console log, log user, user stuff, okay? Let's console log it so you know what I mean. A lot of understanding for me was taking Solana code that everyone wrote and console logging it. Oops. This is running like crazy. Well, let's make this run once for now. Okay, cool. It's running way too many times. Uh, program. 
cool object user stuff okay cool so in our user state we have access it's last post id right and we could separate that right into another state so we could do that by saying over here const uh, last post id i think we'll call it last post id comma set last post id and to be honest we won't need this set uh, last post id because i don't believe we're going to set it to anything else because in solana we are incrementing it we're not doing anything on the front end with it so i'll actually do well actually no we will need to set last post id because uh, underneath set user right here we can say set last post id to user dot last post id and that's the only time we'll set that state again okay cool all right so we got it last post id and we let's see if i put transaction pending here will it freak out oh so transaction not pending yes oh no it still doesn't like that nope okay so we can't use this just yet uh, it might be because we're using it here. There you go. Yep. Awesome. So I'll put public key back. And now it's not going to run their use effect too many times, right? Because that makes sense. If I put set transaction pending here, it's going to run way too many times. Set initialized. There, spell that right. Cool. Okay, cool. Transaction pending. It's all good. All right, no more issues. Awesome. All right, so I got that settled. Uh, let's go back to our code. So we have our last ID now. So anytime I say last post ID, it will be the user's last post ID. It should be zero. <laughs> okay, so with that information, we need to add another seed. Okay, so how do we add this next seed? Well, there's a lot of uh, things that we need to do to format it, right? We can write last post ID, but it needs to be formatted. We can't just write zero here. It should be an unsigned integer eight, U8, right? So how do we make this a U8? Um, to do that, I'll just erase this for now. All right, I'm just gonna say uh, U int, right? You're gonna see eight array dot from parentheses and put in a right here, last post ID. And that's how you get a U8 from this ID. Okay, cool. So we have user PDA, the post PDA, right? We have title and content, and now we have to actually call the program method. So we can say await program, right? Dot methods, dot create post. Okay, it takes in two things, title, content, right? Which we're getting from when we pass it. Then we can say dot counts. Then what accounts does this program need? If you're unsure at all, we can go ahead and look at our Solana Playground. We need post account, user account, and authority. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say post account. We need a user account. We need a authority. And we need system capital P program. Okay, cool. So do we have what we should put for each account? We do post PDA. Remember, this is checking if it exists. If it doesn't exist, right, that's the address. We're making that the address that we write the account to. For user account, it's gonna check if this exists. And if there's an account there, it does. So we're gonna say user PDA. Authority, right? So with the authority, we can say a public key. And we don't need to format that system program we can say system program dot program id comma dot oops dot rpc cool right and we also want to close that modal so we can say set show modal false okay and we add our finally here you can say set transaction pending to false as well Awesome. Okay, cool. Let's pass down create post and go to dashboard. We can erase static create post. 
And now we can just get it from here, get it from use blog, create post. And where do we want to put this create post? Well, let's find it. Create post right here on submit, right? So uh, I don't have to rewrite anything. This is the same name, luckily. And it's using our states from our title and content and putting it there. So in theory, if I create post, it should work. So let's try it. So welcome to my blog. This is my first post. That's the description. We hit post. Let's go. We got a transaction, right? So now we approve. And if this closes, it should work. It closed. All right, and we don't see anything here because we didn't fetch those posts yet. All right, well, we can test it though. If we fetch this, there we go, it exists, right? This is my first post. Welcome to my blog. All right, so there we go. We were able to create a post, which is amazing. Let's freaking go, guys. So we got to create posts. I'm excited. Last but not least, let's figure out how to fetch posts. All right, so you want to learn how to fetch all the posts. Well, what you could do is go ahead and to go into your code and you're already one step there, right? So remember how we did program.account.user account, right? I went ahead and console logged program, right? If I console log program by itself, what is that guys? Program by itself is literally all the information about your program. I can get the ID by doing dot program ID. If I do a dot account, let's take a look at what we see. All right, you might know this already, but if I do dot account, you should see, if I refresh this, oops, let's make sure this is running, uh, yarn dev, okay? Make sure this is running, and there you go, cool. You see this object here, and you see all the accounts that are associated, right, with this program, which is user and just post. So which one do we want out of these? Well, I want the post, all right? So if I say dot post account, let's see where we go from here. All right, this is how I figured out uh, what everything does. Just a lot of console logging and testing. Cool. So as you can see, when I do dot post account, this is all the information about it right here. And another thing that we'll need is the method. So let's see if we can find any here. Provider, coder, prototype, object. Cool. Awesome. So you can see, right? You can say fetch multiple, fetch, right? There's also on subscribe, subscribe, but there's also an all, all right? This will fetch all the accounts that are posts, all right? Even if you yourself didn't make it, all right? For our scope of our project, there's only gonna be uh, one user associated with it. That's kind of how we made it. But if you were going to get multiple users and want their unique post, right? You can filter it by their public key, all right? But again, because of the scope, we don't have to do that with this time. So let's set it up. Okay, so if this is the case, then what we want to do here is say const post accounts and right? make a variable. It's equal to await program dot account dot post account dot all. all. Right, so this should give us all of the posts. Right, and of course, if we want to uh, save this, we're going to need to no, we're going to need to uh, put it in a variable. Or we'll put it in a state, really, rather. So let's fix this, and let's make a state for it. So to make a state, you guys know how to do this by now. It should be post posts set posts and set this equal to use state, and the default state can be an empty array. Okay. So what do we do here? We say set posts is equal to post accounts, and if you want, we can console log the post account. So how many post accounts should we have, guys? All right, if you've been paying attention, all right, as you should be, you should have one post. Cool. So it'll take a second to load. Let's see console array one, right? But is it just the object itself? Take a look at this, right? It's an object with a public key with another property for account. But if I open it, welcome to my blog. This is my first post, blah, blah, blah. And there we go, right? So all we need to do now is take posts, right? Because that's what's holding all these posts and bring it out to the blog. So we can go below here, we can say posts, right? We can go to the dashboard and let's bring it in here. So I'm gonna go to the use blog hook and say posts, right? And you can see post is declared over here. It's our static data. I actually erase this 
And now we don't have any more static data. So if I save this, look at that. We got our post, right? And this makes sense. We only should see one. So if I do this, right, it leads, leads to here. This is my first post. Welcome to my blog, right? So our second page, this is our router, right? If you go back to our model here, this is full posts. When I click on this, it loads to the full post page, right? And loads said item, right? So let's put this in action now. Let's go back to the code. Just double check our create post function. Oh yeah, that's in blog. So I'm in create post. Awesome, such transaction. So let's see if it loads. Let's create a post. Uh, this is how to build a blog. All right, this blog uses the Solana chain. All right, let's hit post. There's our transaction. We hit approve, it loads, and there it is. This blog uses the Solana chain, right? And if you want to put, even go even more in depth with this, and you want like a date with each post, right? You can get the date from the front end, right? And to your user account or your post account, you can add a date feature. Right, so if we want, right, there's another video we have, Airbnb on Solana, this should help you out with that. So with that said, right, we're done with the app, guys. This is it. This is all you have to do to set up, write a smart contract on chain, to make an account, to creating a post, and now you have a blog. So I hope this helps you guys, right? Let me know down below if this helped, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.